Hello everyone and welcome to the CyberBase DC2 winner announcement video. So I just want to say thank you guys for submitting all of your designs into the contest. They were really uh, cool to see. Now we're actually going to be doing this a little bit differently than how most people would do it. Usually they would do a top three or a top five or just any kind of nominees list or they would just show the top one person. But in this video, we are going to be taking a look at every single design submitted. All 15 designs that we got into this contest will be reviewed and discussed in this video. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. One is to make the video longer. And two, because I want to give my own feedback on all of these designs so I can give people criticisms and just help them out with their designs in general, but also, of course, mention the good things in their designs, just to point out their strengths and weaknesses to hopefully um, help them out with uh, future designs. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. I just want to really quickly say that before we begin, all of my opinions are, of course, my own personal thoughts on these, so you might disagree with something that I think, but let's get into it. So our first design is actually the first one that was submitted not even a day after the contest was announced. And this Beyblade is Legacy XO FA2 Flat by Something Bays. And this one is kind of a standard, I feel, for most of these designs. And it's... It's a bit of a doozy. So the layer, it looks okay. Uh, the contact points are reminiscent of both extreme with the sides and cyber with the top and bottom. I think that the color distribution and the color scheme in general is all right. The only big issue I have is those random one by two brackets that are just shoved at the ends of the east and west blades. There's nothing really on top of the brackets like on those studs there and they just kind of interrupt the flow. It makes it look kind of awkward. I'm not a huge fan of that. So there you have that. It's also in the system that I made that's compatible with Reboot and Generate, but it doesn't have those drivers, but it doesn't really matter because they're quite complex, so I don't really blame something base for not making them. But let's move on. For the chassis, we have FA2. It's just a right spin version of FA or filler attack. And that's really all I need to say about it. It's a right spin chassis that fills in the gaps on the layer. So yeah. Then for the driver, we have flat. I call it blur, but flat is perfectly fine. Like the name doesn't really matter. And it's an aggressive tip. So you have that. It fits the attack type, you know, typing for this guy. So overall, it's pretty standard, but not necessarily my favorite. I think it's just fine. So yeah, let's move on. So for our second submission, we have Eternal Exo by Corbin Creates. So this one, it's something. Let's just get into it. So we have a core here, and it is the most unoriginal core design I have ever seen. But it's okay. Corbin said the exact same thing, so that means I can say it. And I do agree. It's just a bunch of 1x2 plates with a 2x2 two two in the center. Not really too offensive, though, so I'm going to let it slide. Next, we got the blade, which is eternal, and this one is a bit messy, both by the design and the color scheme. Uh, I think that the shape of it is kind of weird. It has a lot of exposed studs, which EXO doesn't usually have. It's usually quite smooth and everything, and I think that the uh, lime on there does not really work here. Like, sure, it's a shade of green, but it's just kind of thrown on there. So not the biggest fan of that right there. Um, so we have that. Then we have this chassis slash disc. And it, yeah, I don't like this part. It's just a bunch of plates. Like there's a lot of 1x4s, 1x3s, 1x2s. It's supposed to have an attack and defense mode depending on how you orient it on the blade, which is neat, I guess. But really, it just, it looks, I'll admit it, it's pretty ugly. And there's a common theme with these designs where people just don't really care much about the discs. And you'll see that in a lot of later designs. Um, I like the driver though. It looks kind of cool. It's like Excel, but kind of has a bit of a shield around it. 
So we got that. So yeah, this one is, once again, not really too impressive. Um, I like the tip, but everything else just kind of falls flat for me. So let's move on. Moving on from that, we have Goaded Bladers Supreme Exo. Um, this one is another entry that I got. I don't know. Let's look at it. So we have the layer. Now, this one's actually separated into a chip and a layer, but apparently the chip is kind of hard to get out. So we're just going to have to look at the layer. And it is a very unusual shape. I feel like the shape matches a left spin more than it does for a right spin. So I'm not a huge fan of that. I think that the color scheme on it is fine. The way it's distributed across the bay isn't. It just looks a little messy in my opinion. Uh, one thing I do like about this is that it has these rubber uh, teeth pieces underneath some of the blades. So I guess we have some rubber contacts there. So, you know, that's pretty neat. Moving on, we have a ratchet, which is just a square. Not a whole lot to say here. It's just kind of there. Well, that rhymed. That's crazy. Anyway, we have the driver, which I believe was called Bolt, but it was kind of hard to hear what he was saying. I'm just going to assume that that's what it's called. But either way, it's just like flat, which we saw before. Also, another theme here is just repetition of the same tip, but... That's totally fine. Um, and this is, once again, you know, it's aggressive. It's orange and red, which doesn't really make sense. So, yeah. Overall, this is, once again, a design that didn't really impress me all that much. But those rubber blades are definitely a unique addition. So, as you can see, a lot of these designs aren't really the most impressive. They've been solid. They've been perfectly serviceable as versions of EXO. But nothing really too, too interesting. Again, on the previous one, the rubber blades were cool. But other than that, nothing that really stuck out. But this next one definitely did stick out, but not in the way you would expect. This is Guilty Exo 3A Zoom Dash by Cyclone Bays. And okay, everything I've said that was not good about the previous ones is dwarfed by this one. This is not my favorite. I don't think it looks great, but let's take a deep dive. The next part is 3A, apparently. It doesn't look like 3A. It doesn't even look like a chassis. It looks more like some kind of armor. Not a big fan of this part. Let's just move on. The final part is the Zoom Dash driver, which is a part from LEGO Base's LEGO Valkyrie Dash. And this is actually my favorite part of it. I think the inclusion of this driver, which isn't used that much, is pretty neat. It's really aggressive, has zero stamina. The stamina on this thing is garbage, but it's still a pretty neat addition. So overall, I'm not impressed. I really do not like this one, and even the kind of neat driver choice can't save this very flawed, recoily, messy design. So let's move on. So our next bay here is another interesting bay that caught my attention, but this time in a pretty interesting way. This is Budget Bay's CyberXO Dash. And yeah, that's right, a Dash version of an existing bay. I honestly think that's a pretty neat idea. Of course, this has been done by LEGO Bays, but seeing it for XO is pretty neat. And the rest of the parts are Washer O, which stands for Washer Outer, and Destroy. So let's get into it. As for the CyberXO Dash layer, it's fine. I don't know, it doesn't really stick out to me. Those 1x2 plates in there are kind of weird, and it is fairly round, but it is still quite unique, so I do like that about it. Here we have the disc washer outer, and I apologize for the kind of blurry pick, but from the name, I think you can imagine what this is like. A bunch of washers inside that are distributed outwards to probably give it a lot more stamina. So yeah, nothing too crazy but still neat to see metal included in this bay. And for the driver, we have Destroy, obviously based off of the official burst driver, being a flat tip with a free spinning ring to give it more LED. And yeah, it works. It's very similar to Exceed in a sense, which, you know, I put on Extreme XO. So I guess it's thematically accurate and a pretty decent driver. I'll give it that. So all in all, I think this one has a really cool concept, being an upgrade to Cyber XO. However, I think that the strongest parts about it are definitely the weight and the tip. 
I definitely think that the blade needs a little bit more work, and then I think it'll be really, really cool. I am very excited to show this next one because I actually really like this one. This is a Metal Fight Cyber Exo created by Electric Bays. And I don't know why. I just think this one is pretty neat. Is it because it's Metal Fight despite using a chip disc and driver? Probably, but let's look at it a little bit deeper. The first part is the Exo chip, and it's a very standard chip. And once again, this one includes lime as one of the main colors. And I know that on the previous one, I kind of bashed lime because I didn't think it looked great. But I feel like it works here, probably because there's a lot less of it, and it's used to accent the bay rather than seemingly be a primary color on it. And I do like that. Next up, we have the blade or metal wheel or whatever you want to call it. Not sure what it's called. I don't know if it's metal, fight, cyber, or just cyber, or whatever. But either way... For the most part, I like this. There's one massive flaw, which you've probably already seen here, but let's take a look at the other aspects of it. It once again has lime, but it's kind of hidden behind everything, so I'll let it slide. Uh, it has some green accents. I like the use of the corner tiles. It looks very nice. Uh, simple four blades, which is basic, sure, but it works for the Metal Fight aesthetic, so I do like that. The one problem I have with this are the blades though. Not how they look, but the way they're put onto the Beyblade. It's more fitting for a left spin, and that really hurts the design in my opinion. Not necessarily for how it looks, like it still looks pretty cool, but that is a two stud recoil point, or a two plate tall recoil point, and that is really gonna kind of go crazy in the stadium, maybe in a good way, but it'll probably just self-destruct or or, you know, like, just destroy its own stamina. And I know, one of the bays before, I believe it was Supreme Exo, um, also had kind of a more left spinny shape. But this one, I feel like you can't really get away with it. So just, if you switch around the orientation of the blades, make them more right spin friendly, I will like this thing a lot more. But either way, I think it looks very neat. For the disc, we have a simple octagon. I'm not really going to cover this at all. It's just there. And for the final part, it's the same tip that was used on Eternal Exo, it's like Zephyr, and it was also used on Cyber, you're gonna see a lot more of this tip, but it still works. So overall, I did really, really like this one, despite the simplistic nature, which despite that I think works pretty well for Exo, and the blades that don't work for right spin, I do like this one, so yeah. This next Beyblade was created by my man Ultrablader. We have Explosion Exo 5A Exceed. Now you're gonna have to once again excuse these images because unfortunately they are squares. I couldn't really do anything about it. But let's just look at this Beyblade. For the layer, I think that the shape is quite unique with the use of the one by one brackets holding in those side blades and the top and bottom parts being quite large and angular it looks cool. However, the shape does not work for EXO. It is way too round. And I know you guys are thinking, oh, but the first Cyber one was round. That Beyblade isn't canon and is no longer in the running. So this one, I'm not the biggest fan of how it's round, but I still think that the layer shape is quite neat. For the chassis, we got 5A. And once again, it's just so round. It doesn't work for attack. Yeah, just a simple chassis. I don't really have much to say. It just looks like... It's kind of just 1D, but I guess slightly more aggressive. And finally, for the tip, we have Exceed, which is, of course, on Extreme Exo. It's just the same part, and it's a good part at that, so nothing to complain about here. So once again, while I think that the shape of this is very cool, it just doesn't lend itself towards the attack-type nature that Exo is known for. This next design is another one that I liked quite a bit. We have Emerald Exo, created by Ninko. I'm sorry if I butchered your username there. But uh, this one, I feel like, is a pretty cool evolution to Cyber Exo. It feels kind of like Cyber. However, it has a bit of an organic feel to it. I'm not sure. Maybe it's those round bits that are lime. And usually, I wouldn't like the lime. But I actually think it works for this one. It feels more like a secondary color, not like a main color. But yeah, I think that the shape here works for Cyber. Maybe the color scheme is a little bit messy, but I think it's totally serviceable. 
The driver is very simple. It's the bottom of a stud surrounded by some kind of disc, and it kind of looks like Quest, but uh, I don't hate it. I think it's at least a little bit more interesting than seeing the whole stud for the millionth time. So this design is good. It's simple, it's quaint, but I think it works. For our next design, we have this one created by AJ's Bays. I don't know if it has a name. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. And this is another one that isn't really my cup of tea. It's very bizarre, and you'll see why. We have this chip here, which has these wings attached to the sides, which, you know, I guess is quite neat looking. Here we have the layer base, which this one has a severe lack of green and even blue on it. And that's because when I asked AJ about this, he said that he didn't have a lot of parts in that color, if not any. So I excused it. But either way, even if it did have the correct color scheme, I don't know if I'd really like this one. The shape is so aggressive. It's really wonky. The blades that are like massive just look too recoily to me. I don't know, it just doesn't really work very well for EXO, I feel. The next part is this chassis, which, hey, there's your blue, I guess. So, there's that. It's another basic shape. I'm not really going to go over it. And we have yet another hole stud for the tip. So yeah, not a huge fan of this one. I feel like it works better for longinus, though, so maybe rework it into a longinus, and maybe it'll be fine. But for EXO, it doesn't really work. For our next design, we have Machine Exo, created by Inferno YT. And this one feels like a defense type, or at least some kind of tornado stall bay, and you'll see why. So I'm once again going to have to apologize for the poor images. He just moves the bay around too much, and I couldn't get a clear view of what it looks like. But it does use the CyberSpark kind of system. And it does have a turn ship, which is just a recolor of X01 with red. Why is there red? I'm not sure. That's not a color on XO. It's just kind of thrown on there. If red is on like a bracket or someplace hidden, I can excuse it since it's not an integral part of the color scheme really, since you can usually get away with that. But here it's prominently shown on the bay and I don't think it looks great. And I know you guys probably can't tell, but trust me, the layer base is way too round. It feels more like a defense type than an attack type, and I really do not like that. Next up, we have this chassis thing, which, yeah, it looks really ugly. And the contact points that are on those 1x2 brackets, they're gonna fall off without tape. And the design should, once again, not be fully dependent by tape. It should be fairly stable on its own, and I don't think this Beyblade would pass that test. And we have another whole stud tip. So yeah, once again, this thing just feels more like a tornado staller than attacker, so I really am not a fan. Next up, we have Fat Quack Games Stellar Exo Hexa Exceed. Kind of pulling a Hasbro with that name, but you know, it's whatever. And this is the only stud up design that we have, so let's take a look at it. As for the layer, it's fine. I think the shape is quite nice. It reminds me of Cyber Exo Mold 1 if it had actual attack power, so that's pretty cool. However, it all falls flat with the center design. It doesn't look good. There's a lot of exposed studs everywhere, and instead of giving it texture, it just looks like it needs some acne wash. Not a huge fan of that. Next up, we have the Hexa Disc that is an octagon. Okay. Uh, it's another simple disc, and I'm not really going to go over it other than that. For our final part, we have yet another Exceed, except this time it's stud up, so it can work with this Beyblade. So this one, it's... Okay, not very special, but not too terrible, I'd say. <sighs> okay, this next one I've been dreading to review. This design right here, I don't even remember who made it. I forgot to write it down, but this is not my favorite design. Every bad thing that I've said about the previous ones, even Guilty XO, they apply here. For the most part, at least. But let's look at the parts. Why is this thing not good? Well, let's look at it. Luckily, we got one clean shot of all the parts of this bay right here, so I don't really need to transition between all of these bays, and this is making my job a whole lot easier. The chip is a left spin turn chip for some reason, or maybe it's the camera making it look that way. Maybe it's mirrored for some reason. I don't know, but either way, that's a left spin chip, and for some reason, it has orange 
Why does it have orange? I'm not sure. That's not a color on EXO. So it's just there for seemingly no reason. Then we have the blade of some kind, which is super recoily in both spin directions, but it also has yellow, tan, red. Like, why are those colors there? I'm not sure. They're just there. They aren't colors on EXO. So it just looks even more haphazard than every single Beyblade we've looked at previously. The disc is another random disc, but again, the inclusion of the colors that aren't on EXO normally just make it look so weird. Uh, that driver over there is pretty interesting. I don't really remember if that uh, rubber band does something. It probably acts as some kind of spring, so it's maybe a spring-loaded driver, which I'll say, that's pretty cool. That's actually my favorite part of this bay. Then we have those that random washer and those 1x4 plates in the back, which, to be honest, I don't really remember what they do. But, yeah. All in all, I don't like this one. I don't like the color scheme. I think the shape is a bit recoily. The disc is very mediocre. The driver is probably pretty interesting, but it doesn't really carry the rest of the bay, and I'm more interested on moving on. So that one was a bit of a mess, but luckily this next one is quite cool. This is Bistro Borgir's Hybrid Exo. Now this person actually won Ytastic's previous design contest, so it's no surprise that I find this one to also be pretty strong. However, there is still um, something that I don't like about it, and that's just the color distribution. I think it's quite messy, but the color scheme itself is quite good. The shape is really cool. It works very well as an evolution to Cyber Exo and gives off Metal Fight vibes. So I do like that quite a bit. We don't get a really parts list, but we do get a bottom view. It shows this circle here. And then this tip, which I imagine is similar to Venture being it's a flat tip surrounded by rubber, which is pretty neat. So all in all, I really like this design. The only problem is it being a bit messy, but if that were fixed, it would probably be one of the strongest designs here, if not the strongest. For our next design, we have Unraveling Exo by Frost LBB. And this one, I think, is a Beyblade X design because, as you'll see, it has um, what looks like a bit and a ratchet, which is quite interesting. But as for the blade, uh, it's very close. It's very close to being pretty solid enough, but I do have one big problem with it. The color scheme is fine. I think it's a little bit messy, but it's okay. Besides that random gold stud, I think it looks good enough. The only problem are the north and south blades that have these giant 1x3 slopes on them. And they have so much recoil. They have a full plate and a stud of recoil right there, which is just too much. Also, it doesn't look good. It looks very awkward, and I'm not a big fan of that. We have this white ratchet-like part right here. I don't really think I need to say much about it. It's just there to act as a ratchet. And then we have the driver or bit, whatever. I'm pretty sure it's a bit since it has a gear at the bottom. And I think it's really cool to see some Beyblade X stuff. It's probably the flat bit from, of course, Drawn Sword, but made into Lego. Once again, a very simple design that didn't really wow me. It's just okay. And for our final design, we have Extremia Exo by Painpoke. And Painpoke said that he wasn't cooking with the name. I do agree. And as for the bay itself, it's kind of just a very watered down version of Extreme Exo. It uses Cyber Exo's color palette, which is kind of based, to be honest. But it's just very round and just looks like a worse version of Extreme, in my opinion. On the bottom, we can see it has a tip similar to Exceed, but it doesn't free spin, so... Yeah, that's kind of lame. So yeah, this design, once again, it's kind of meh. And just like that, we are done! Oh geez, okay, so looking back on all these designs, we got a lot of ones that were pretty mediocre, a couple that I really did not like, but then there are of course some diamonds in the rough, a good variety of bays to choose from for the top three, which speaking of the top three, let's get to that right now. For my third place pick, we have Emerald Exo by Ninko. This might be a surprise to some, as they'd say it's quite basic, but Exo's whole design philosophy is quite simple, and it's not always a bad thing to be like that. I think it works well as an evolution to Cyber Exo, and it definitely deserves the third place pick. For my second place pick, 
I chose Bistro Board Gears Hybrid Exo. Everything I said about this guy at first still stands, of course. I think that it looks really cool. I think the shape works. I think that the colors are a little bit messy, but either way, it's still a very good design and worthy of the second place title. And now, for the moment everyone has been waiting for, my number one pick for this design contest. My favorite Beyblade that I've seen throughout this entire thing. Metal Fight Cyber Exo. Sure, the blades might have way too much recoil, but it doesn't really take away from the fact that this thing still looks really, really clean. And sure, some might say that it's very basic and simple, but that's exactly what the design philosophy of Cyber Exo is like. And this being a Metal Fight version of that, it works really well. I really like this Beyblade, and I definitely think it deserves my first place pick. So there we have it. The Cyber Bay's Design Contest 2 is done. So I'd like to thank all of you so much for joining and submitting your designs. Even if I didn't like your design, I still do appreciate it a lot that you took time out of your day to make something for this silly YouTube video. So yeah, congratulations to the top three winners and the first place winner. And yeah, that's about it. And for the next video, well, get ready for something new. Comment, like, subscribe, stuff like that, and I'll see you in the next video.